Hi, I'm Jamie from Not So Wimpy Teacher, and today is the first video in a series that I'm going to do about teaching math. So today's kind of an introduction. I want to talk a little bit about what math workshop is and what it isn't, and then give you a little preview of what you can expect in the upcoming videos in this series. All right, so you might have heard a writing workshop and reading workshop. They're very common ways to teach those standards. Math workshop really isn't much different. One thing that I find a lot of people say to me, I can't use math workshop because my school uses Saxon or my school uses Eureka or whatever curriculum. The reality is that it doesn't matter what curriculum you or your school or district use or don't use because math workshop is not a curriculum. It, it isn't intended to replace your curriculum. You can, do, you can do math workshop with any curriculum you have, I bet. I did it with Eureka Engage New York. It's a tricky curriculum with a lot to it. But I found it really easy to use in a math workshop format because really math workshop is just the way that you are delivering your content. So if you have a curriculum that you need to use, it's okay. You can still deliver it in a workshop content or you can still deliver that content in a workshop model. Okay. Yay. That means that most of us can, can probably do this. I'm going to share some reasons why you're going to want to in a minute as well. But let's just take a little look at a typical workshop, math workshop um, block in a school day. And let's remember that we all have different limitations and we all have different um, expectations and requirements from our, our administration, our district, our state, our curriculum. So know that you don't have to do it just like me and sometimes you can just take these ideas I'm giving you and modify it to work in your classroom or in your situation okay you don't have to be just like me but this is kind of a traditional look at what your math block might look like if you were using a workshop model all right I hear lots of people say I don't have time for workshop because I have this or that curriculum I think as long as you have at least an hour, you can do it in a workshop model. If you have less than an hour of math, I really think that you and or your administration need to go back through the schedule because there are a ton of math standards to cover and I feel like when you're looking at your whole day, the amount of instructional minutes you're spending, math needs at least an hour. I loved a couple of years when I had an hour and a half. It was awesome. But I've done the workshop model with one hour of time. You have to move quickly, you have to teach the transitions, but it's so possible. And here's what it might look like. You start off with a mini lesson, just like you do with reading workshop and writing workshop. A mini lesson, it's short, it's whole group, it can involve your curriculum, should involve your curriculum if you have to use curriculum. Um, this is about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, this is when you're introducing concept, a new concept, new vocabulary, or a new strategy. After that, you'll have small groups and centers, or some people call them rotations, but small groups and centers. This is when the teacher is meeting with a small group of students and the rest of the class is rotating through some center activities. You're going to want to dedicate 40 to 60 minutes of your class time for this. I loved the years that I had 60 minutes for this part didn't have that every year, but when I did, I loved it. My third graders could totally handle this, and um, it just it just meant that we got to dig a little bit deeper. So if you're able to move it around and give yourself that much time, I think you'll really enjoy it. But if you have at least 40 minutes, I think you can have a really beneficial workshop time and um, small group time. Um, at the end of your workshop, you might want to save just a few minutes, sometimes not even five. You can do a share in just a minute or two if that's all you have. But just a real quick share time where a student, and this can be done many different ways. I love to do a pair share type thing. Tell your partner what 
a product is. If that was something from your lesson or even from a lesson the day or two ago, it can be review. Turn and tell your partner an example of an improper fraction. Turn and tell your partner one, an example of one quadrilateral. These can be, that can be how simple your share is. It doesn't have to be something elaborate, but it could also involve an exit ticket if that's something that you use. I know that the Eureka curriculum comes with them. That could also be a share sometimes too. They're sharing on paper what they know. So this is kind of a look at what the workshop might look like. And we're gonna dig deeper into all of these. So don't be like, whoa, what am I gonna do during the mini lesson? How am I gonna make it that short? Eureka lessons are like an hour long. You're crazy, Jamie. Um, we're gonna look into all of these much deeper, I promise. We're gonna talk tomorrow about the mini lesson. And then um, we're gonna spend a lot of time next week talking about small groups and centers because that can be the tricky part, but it doesn't have to be. I have already made so many mistakes for you that I can tell you what I've learned and maybe it'll save you a couple of mistakes and um, a couple of gray hairs. Why in the world would we want to use this workshop model? And for me, these are the things that, that this is why I loved the workshop model. My curriculum didn't say to do centers and guided groups. It was something I added in and I couldn't have been happier that I did. First of all, like most importantly, it provides differentiation. My curriculum didn't really provide that differentiation. It was the way that I gave the content, the way that I used the curriculum that provided the differentiation. Meeting in small groups allows me to give students much more personalized attention. It allows me to see where they're at. It allows me to help them move the manipulative around if they need to. I can give them exactly what they need at their speed. So they're not necessarily working at the same speed as the kid who sits next to them. And, and that's what they, they need from me. So that's why I made a tough curriculum really work for my entire class, low learners, high learners, is that we were meeting in guided groups. So I was able to meet them where they were at and then push them where I'd like them to be, okay? That, that's a number one reason to use a workshop model is you're going to be able to give that differentiation to your students. We don't all have a classroom of 25 learners who are at the exact same place in their math. So we can't just teach them all like they are. We can't just stick 25 kids in a classroom, talk in front of them, give them a worksheet, give them a homework sheet, give them a test. Math workshop gives me that opportunity to meet them where they're at and help them on their level. Um, engagement. There is nothing more boring than sitting at desks doing worksheets for your entire math block. When I put in these center activities and these um, guided groups, when students got to get out of their desk and move to another location, work on an activity that involved sorting or matching or dice rolling or playing a game, and then they got to move to another rotation. They were moving, their blood was moving, and they were having fun well, they're actually doing complex math tasks that were moving them forward. They loved it. And when they loved it, they worked harder. So the engagement I saw in my class was amazing. And I didn't see that when I was doing my curriculum the old school traditional way, sit in your desk and, and um, I teach then we practice, then you do it yourself kind of thing. I just didn't see that kind of engagement. I need to get them up, I need to get them moving, but I also needed their activities to be really geared towards our lesson, not just like a babysitter, but it could still be engaging. And that's exactly what happened with my math workshop. Another great thing about the math workshop is that it is ongoing assessment. I'm not talking about like the giving a test at the end of the unit kind of assessment. When you're able to meet with small groups, you're able to see daily where your students' struggles are and where their strengths are. You can see right where their understanding is. You can see which strategies they've got and which strategies still don't make sense to them. And so it's this informal assessment that's ongoing that I don't necessarily have if I just give, just give an end of the unit type of assessment. I have assessments that I all of the time just through observation because I'm sitting right next to them, watching them 
discussing with them. I can quickly see where, you know, when, where they're going wrong. I can quickly see where they take a wrong turn and I can help them guide them back before they're way too far down that path, before they get those bad habits. And that's a great thing about the workshop. I can then decide if I need to slow my curriculum down or if I can speed it up a little bit based on how my students are performing during those groups, during the center activities. So that ongoing assessment was really valuable to me as a teacher making decisions. Okay, so I loved Math Workshop. I loved how easy it was to implement week after week. I People think, oh, this is going to take so much time. It doesn't have to. I'm here to tell you, it does not have to. You do not have to spend every weekend making new activities. You do not have to spend every Monday teaching them how to play new games and do new center activities. I'm here to tell you that if you're doing it that way, I can save you some time. All right? So let me just tell you what you can expect in this series about teaching math. First of all, tomorrow my video is going to be all about the math mini lesson. And this is the time that I'll be doing it live on my Facebook page if you like to join me live. Otherwise, I'll have it up here on my YouTube channel soon after. So, tomorrow I'm going to talk about those mini lessons. How are you going to use your curriculum? How are you going to keep a mini? What kinds of things could you do during the mini lessons? What kinds of things do you not need to bother with during your mini lesson? Okay? This is important because we got to keep that mini lesson short or we don't have time for the guided groups in the centers. And that's where the magic is really happening. Okay? So that's the, that's the next video. After that, I'm going to be doing a video about the small group lesson. Okay, so we finished our mini lesson. Now what? What are you going to do with the kids when they come to meet with you at your table? What are you going to do with them? How are you going, how are you going to support them? I'm going to give you some ideas of simple, simple things you can do, right? It's not complicated. I'm going to show you. The next video will all be about schedules for math centers. Like, how are you going to decide who goes to what center when? How many groups should I have? When will they meet with me? When will they do that center? I'm going to give you a couple schedule ideas, a freebie for you to use um, to make it work in your classroom. The following video will all be about the math center activities. What are the kids actually doing in their centers? I have gotten it to the point where I can prepare my math center activities for a month at a time, and it just takes me just a short while. In fact, you could prepare them over the summer, be done. Okay, that's how easy it is. And the next video will be organizing those center activities because um, we're teachers. We love everything to be in a container and have labels. We can't have chaos because all these math center activities can get, will get messy if we don't have a place for them. So I'm going to show you lots of different ways to organize them and give you some free labels. And then in the last video in the series will be about that first week of school, how you introduce the procedures and get your math workshops started. So I can't wait for you to join me for this whole series about math and math workshop. I look forward to that. Bye, guys.